All right, so here's my thought process. I have an XP1200 um, Duramax hybrid. So this is where propane would go. I wanna to try to switch this to natural gas. And in everything I've seen is usually behind the carburetor, there'll be some really large um, gasket of some sort, kind of like a, I don't know, the, the nomenclature, but something will go here. Some big piece of metal will go here with um, that connects to the regulator. It would then bump out this whole air, um, carburetor and this air intake. So then you had to cut the frame to make room for that in order to have natural gas. Um, another one that I saw where you don't have to cut the frame is you just get a brand new uh, carburetor with a regulator that's attached to it, which I already kind of have that. Um, but it doesn't work for natural gas when you propane. Third option, the one that I'm leaning towards, is a little snorkel thing, a little gasket that goes in front and it sticks in and then that connects to the regulator. So my thought is let me get the snorkel, but before I connect the snorkel, I'll take the regulator and just disconnect this and put the regulator uh, for natural gas that connects to this because this tube already comes up and that's the tube right there where my finger is at right now and it connects already to the carburetor and in my understanding the reason why natural gas does not work with this is because the regulator is set up for um, liquid propane so just to use what I already have, um, buy a kit, but only use the regulator, connect the regulator down here, take this off, and I'll see if that works. I'll try that in a couple weeks. Back on that theory, this is the hose that originally came with it. This is what was connected to the propane regulator on the um, generator. Um, that hose was too short, so this is the included hose that came with US carburation. This clamp right here, this clamp was already on the original hose. I'm just going to go ahead and reuse this. So um, the directions for the snorkel is you do not need to remove the carburetor. But because I am on a vengeance or I guess on a mission to uh, try to discover whether or not I can use this port and just connect this hose to a regulator. And I'm thinking about putting the regulator somewhere around here. I don't know, somewhere around here, um, but this is the regulator that would then go to my gas. So I'm going to give that a shot and see uh, if it works. Alright, buttoned up the um, air intake. Uh, this is the hose that came with from US Carburation and is clamped in over there. Um, the snorkel is not installed. Here is the snorkel. Alright, so my intuition was right. So I hooked it up and it worked. It, um, for me, I had to keep the choke wide open, not closed. Um, back here, I primed it for about maybe 10 seconds or less. Um, I saw another YouTube video where a guy said that it's recommended to back this out anywhere between seven to eight times initially. Uh, I backed it up about close to eight times and it started right up. Um, so this hose, this is a three quarter inch hose that I got off of Amazon for like $127. The snorkel kit was $187. That's because it includes the snorkel. Um, the whole reason why I'm doing this is really just for other folks out there who have the same exact uh, model or similar model. And um, if, if you have a Duromax uh, hybrid, you can convert this to natural gas by just removing the hose that's connected to the carburetor, putting a new hose to a regulator. You need to have a regulator. There's other hacks out there of folks who have this where they connected natural gas like directly through the carburetor to have a little valve that they feather. The problem with that is for whatever reason, if your generator ever, ever cuts off, um, gas is just flowing, spewing out. The regulator stops that from happening. So if this were to ever cut out, carburetor, or, I'm sorry, regulator should stop flow of natural gas. Um, so this is a three quarter inch, it's very heavy, very thick, expensive, $127. It's 15 foot long. And this is what it comes to. So I got a quick disconnect. I have a valve to turn it off and on. Uh, and it goes down to my meter. A little bit about this. So I did this all by myself. Um, 
that is not recommended. I am not telling you guys to take this into your own hand. There's always risks involved. It's always best to get a licensed plumber uh, and somebody who knows how to hook this up. But for whatever reason, if you like to tinker like myself, this is just for entertainment purposes. This is not a tutorial. I'm pretty sure there's one or a hundred things I, I could have done better or I may have done wrong too. That's okay. Um, I already knew the risks. So what did I do? Um, summary, I bought the US carburetor snorkel kit. Uh, as I mentioned a couple times already, I just connected it directly to the carburetor. I uh, have a regulator that I mounted uh, this way. Um, I really didn't have to do much uh, in, in the sense that this hose was just long enough to where I needed it. Um, I used a sealant that came with it, made sure this was sealed in, in this direction. Uh, drilled some holes, uh, went right in there. It was flush. I didn't have to do. I didn't even have to take off the um, uh, the gas tank. I was it was able to do this completely with the gas tank in, and it just fits perfectly. Um, I may figure out a different way, maybe getting an elbow um, so that it just does not kink. This is my very first initial run, uh, but I'll probably get a three quarter inch elbow. Uh, so kind of reduce this and make it much straighter. Um, but then this hose goes to my meter. This is where you want to get a licensed plumber. I did this by myself. I'm pretty sure I did this wrong. Hey, but it works, right? Okay, so down in my meter. Um, this already was existing from the previous owner. It came up to here. And there was a cap right... Uh, actually, no, sorry. There was a cap right here. I added these extensions uh, myself. So um, this is... This elbow is a half inch, but then I expanded it to three quarter inch. Um, this is just my initial run. What I'm eventually going to do is replace this piece so that it tees off to three quarter inch of an elbow. So it'll just be three quarter inch all the way down. So this is kind of like my little choke point. I'll, I'll fix that. Um, I have this valve here. Uh, that All this I bought from Lowe's, by the way. So down here, for mine, uh, I had to turn it off. I went to Harbor Freight and I got myself a pipe wrench. Those heavy duty pipe wrenches, you need those. First of all, you cannot do this job without a pipe wrench. Uh, but I got a pipe wrench, I cl closed this off. Um, went inside my house, turned on my stove, made sure all the gas was um, at the line. Came over here, there was a cap, took the cap off and just, I had to go to Lowe's twice to get all the right fittings because I didn't really know how this worked. Uh, I got the sealant for gas, put them on the threads. And all the way over here um, and this is my quick disconnect so this is heavy duty um, can't do it with one hand but you pull this out and there you go gas is already shut off so I don't have to worry about it but even if I turn it on gas is not gonna come out of here uh, I most of my research actually went to how to do this myself get a licensed plumber that's my advice, if you really, really, really want to do it yourself, uh, just do your research. All right, so this is now connected. It's now on. So it's on, gas is coming down. I, I did use a spray bottle, by the way, with soap to make sure all my connections were airtight and no bubbles were coming out. All right, I'm gonna push this. All right, push that enough. Let's go over here.
So this thing ran my whole house. Um, I didn't test it for that long. This is just my initial test. Um, it's about 27 degrees right now in December. Uh, so I really don't want to try to spend too much time down here, um, out here fiddling around. Um, my initial impressions is that it does run quieter. Um, up until this point, I've only run this on gasoline. Uh, in fact, I have in my shed a bunch of jerry cans that I got Wavian and Gelg um, that I've kind of been saving up in the event I needed to use it. And spending so much money on uh, metal jerry cans and gasoline, I stumbled upon, well, why don't I do this? I have natural gas. This will be a, a much better, safer option. Um, so I'm still going to keep those jerry cans because I spent a significant amount of money on those nice uh, NATO cans. Uh, there's always a use for those anyways. Um, but in any case, uh, I finally figured it out. This is something that I've been wondering for the past two years since I've owned this. Is yes, you can convert this to natural gas. Uh, you cannot use the propane regulator. Um, like I mentioned before, I uh, kind of went over how to do that, but it's, it's a really good option. Um, now regarding this the 30 amp, I know it's 30 amp, it should be 50 amps, but with the general link, and this is the only thing I have is the general link, that's just as good as it's going to get for me. Um, in order to get 50 amp, I need to upgrade my whole panel in my basement. I have a 100 amp split bus panel um, box downstairs, a breaker box. And in order for me to upgrade, uh, it's $5,000. I actually had an electrician out here a couple days ago. Um, so if I want to upgrade my whole panel, I got to do that first before I can then get a switch box, which that's going to be a couple more hundred dollars. Um, in order to get this F50 amp. So that's a significant amount of money. Um, initially, I was going to move, but I'm still here two years later, so uh, I don't lose power often. Um, in the two years I've owned this, I've only had to run it for a half a day. Uh, there was some construction going on in my neighborhood. Power went out for a half a day. I work from home, so I need power. Um, I work remotely, so um, I was able to fire this up, this up and host several meetings. And then by mid-afternoon, I came back out here and I noticed the power was back up and running, so I disconnected it. Um, so this is just mainly a peace of mind and assurance that I know if something ever happens, I have natural gas. Um, in my area, the reliability of our power has been getting better. Um, growing up as a kid, we, I used to lose power in this D.C. metro area a lot. Uh, they're moving everything underground and increasing reliability. Uh, so... Hopefully I won't have to use this, but because again, house full of kids, I now have assurance if need be, I have natural gas and I have gasoline. A little bit overkill, but hey, better be prepared than to be sorry. Later.